And here now is the chart for Dash. I had not done an update for Dash for quite a while. So I wanted to put one up and take you through um, where it's going right now and where it could go. So these are the markings from the prior analysis. We see the jaws of wealth. Look at this broadening pattern. Very similar to what I just put out for Litecoin. Now we all know, and I've shown this before, here. This is a very high similarity index of one of the patterns that keeps showing up in every one of the, not every one, just about every one of the alts that I analyzed. And the similarity index is very high. They're not exactly identical. No, that'll be silly. Then the universe will be highly, perfectly predictable. So here, however, you see a lot of similarity index. The reason is because sentiment is pretty uniform across the cryptosphere. And since price is a reflection of sentiment, if sentiment is pretty uniform, you're going to get a high similarity index with regards to not only just the patterns, but the Elliott waves as well. ABC, 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 ABCDE, triangle pattern. Okay. The other pattern that we've been seeing is the cup and handle. We saw how bullish that was for Zencash. And we're seeing the same cup and handle for Steemit. And I think Steam will go to four by mid January or so. And then well into twenty eighteen, maybe fourteen bucks. And at the same time the so that's cup and handle, symmetrical triangles or A B C D E triangles. The third type is the jaws of wealth. That's another very similar pattern. Now, these triangles can then be happening within, let me get rid of this. These triangle patterns, symmetrical triangle patterns can still happen within the jaws of wealth. So it's almost like an encompassment, which I think is pretty cool. And that comes to layers of sentiment. Sentiment has degree, which has, for instance, since sentiment has duality, fear and greed. And within each, sentiment has degrees. You can be a little bit angry, you can be really angry, and you can be totally out of your mind with anger. You can be slightly afraid, really afraid, and totally horrid. So degree differences and opposites. And the fact that this symmetrical triangle is encompassed within the jaws of wealth, another higher degree pattern, a reflection of a higher degree of sentiment is what I'm trying to say. The degree of sentiment here is is lesser than the degree of sentiment that's projecting the broadening pattern, the jaws of wealth. And that's one way how I try to find the trend. Someone asked me, how do you find the trend? Well, everyone will say, well, you draw trend lines. But my, my way is conceptually a bit more abstract than that. And I just explained it to you. Sentiment has degrees, and each degree of sentiment projects a different price action. And therefore, a different pattern can be deciphered, discerned, for each degree of sentiment. And again, broadening pattern obviously must be a higher degree of sentiment than that of a symmetrical triangle in this case. Can you have a broadening pattern come up happening within a um, symmetrical, big, huge symmetrical triangle? Absolutely. It doesn't mean that the jaws of wealth is always a high degree pattern. No. 
it just depends on what begets what. So the jars of wealth here begets the symmetrical triangle. It could be vice versa. And it's just a begetting system. Just like, for example, when you have one, two, three, four, five. These five waves are subwaves to a higher wave, let's say one. So wave one begets these five waves. Because wave one is of a higher degree trend than these five waves. These five waves are subwaves of this wave one. Now this wave five itself will have five waves. And these blue five waves are begotten by the wave five, white wave five circle, which is then begotten by the first wave one of a higher degree. So wave one of a higher degree begets wave five and its subwaves, and the subwaves of that five, and the lower five, lower five, infinitesimally, to the, s to the scale of our atoms. And these waves are happening from that scale to the scale of immensity, the immensity scale of the universe, all at the same time. So the degree of sentiment that's projecting the white five impulse waves is less than the degree of the sentiment that's projecting the circle Roman numeral waves, and that degree of sentiment which is projecting the higher degree wave one. It's all levels of degrees. And that is how wave one, two, three, four, five, and its subwaves are structured. And all the begotten systems or begetting systems embed the Fibonacci ratio. So that is my conceptual abstract rationale to why technical analysis works on the front end, at the end of measuring the, measuring the charts and reading the charts and counting the charts. But let's look at the back end of technical analysis. And this is a little bit, again, abstract. So you have to have a little bit of slightly more of an abstract conceptual viewpoint on this. I, 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 my favorite philosophical saying is, what are words but symbols of symbols, therefore twice removed from reality? And what that means is no different how, than how technical analysis works. What drives price is sentiment. So price in a chart is a reflection of, of sentiment. And sentiment is a downstream effect of thought. The thought, sentiment, price, which can be displayed on a chart like this. And technical analysis measures the reflection of sentiment. Therefore, it is twice removed from reality, that being thought. You can never measure thought directly. Not that I know, I don't know how. But sentiment is very dualistic. Fear and greed has degrees and reflects and projects this type of price charts, which then can be used by elite wave analysis and chart patterns to measure. This is also the reason why, because technical analysis is twice removed from reality, quote unquote, this is also the reason why technical analysis can never be perfect. If some technical analysis says, I, have, I am perfect, I have perfect score, turn and don't walk, one, he's a liar. It can never, never be perfect. 
You can get close. You can beat the odds. And you can be consistent in making money with it, yes, profitably. But you will never bet 100. Because that's not how it works. When y all you're doing is measuring the reflection of sentiment and not able thus to measure directly the thoughts behind that. And I'm not talking just individual thoughts, I'm talking just mass at the scale of socionomics, let's say. So, I hope that gives a very good introduction. This is another reason why you really want to watch the videos. I will often go on these little bit of tangents, not, not to um, not to digress, but to really give the meat and bo the meat of the rationale that drives my technical analysis concepts. So, let's get rid of these, clean it up a little bit. <coughs> the third type that is driving up the similarity index as a result of the uniformity of the sentiment across cryptosphere is called a broadening pattern. I call it the jaws of wealth when the price is near the bottom. And I get rid of some of these old markings. Okay. And I'm seeing A, B, C, D touch points. Touch the top, touch the bottom, scrape along the bottom, touch the top. Now it's going to touch the bottom. So what kind of triangle do you think this is? I just drew one for the same kind for uh, Bitcoin. Usually once you start doing this for, let's say, <coughs> five, six months of practicing or labeling, you'll be able to just visually catch it. We don't even have to count it. Here's A, B, C, D, and maybe we'll do a bullish wick E. Now some of you who have posted triangles labeled it like this, <laughs> and which is a very common mistake. You call this you call this A, this B, C, D, E, and that's incorrect. You first, the first touch of the trend, this is an uptrend, is zero. From there, the next down is A, B, C, D, E. If it was going downwards, first trend up would be the A, not the bottom. The top here is not the A. It's the first reverse opposite trend that, that has a turning point. That would be the A, so A, B, C, D, E. So you got to be careful on that. This is not A. You don't go A, B, C, D, E. You go A, B, C, D, E because this is an uptrend. So the first down is, down stab is the A. If this was on a downtrend, the first up stab would be the A. Okay? So I think there's a little more to go. The apex of this triangle occurs at around November 25th Thanksgiving time. <coughs> so if this is correct, A, B, C, D, and this could be the D heel, let's say. I don't know, but I don't think, so. yeah, it could be. Maybe E might be heel. All right, and from here, what's going to happen? What do you need to see to get the final confirmation of a trend change? Because this is going to make a hurry up the hurry up and wait syndrome of cryptos. This is going to hurry its up, itself up and waste no time to want to touch that upper tagline, the upper line. And the E is here. I'm going to lower it because I think the hurry up phase will just make it near vertical.
could be like that. And I know it's going to change, be different from my prior targets. And that one's at 677. I think this has a very similar similarity index with light going just a little behind maybe. That's okay. Remember I gave an example analogy of a popcorn. <laughs> Let's say you have hundred or three hundred of these. I don't know exactly how many altcoins we have now, jeez. <coughs> And they all have similar patterns, but different timing. So you're going to, just like when you're popping popcorn, as the heat heats up, you're going to hear a single pop, 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 until you get a lot of popping at the same time. And that and that's what's going to happen. I think that's how it's going to happen. We're already seeing some poppings like Zencash. Even BitShares did a little bit of popping, and it's not done. I am uber ultra bullish on bit shares. Not from a time frame of just a few months, I think years. In my opinion, if anything, if Bitcoin wants any will correct, it will do a cycle degree correction, a major correction. I had posted some big picture assessments back a month and a half or so ago, and as time gets closer to a bigger top of maybe somewhere between nine, eight thousand or fifteen thousand, I don't know. If he does get there, I will post start posting the big picture assessments where the cycle topping of big, big, fat wave 5 will occur and what happens after that. And my little monkey brain says one of the trigger points that could cause such a massive crash correction of Bitcoin could be because of um, maybe the government, SEC, wanting to take full control and regula regulate all cryptos and exchanges. And in that event, in that city, the only thing that will go inverse to Bitcoin will be BitShares. That's my, in my humble opinion. Now, since I stated that as a possibility, watch, it, uh, the universe never gives it the same way as you stated. Okay, so let's see how it goes, because it could be a very different um, scenario, but on the same thing. It's like the way I said, there's two different pathways, or multiple pathways of counting LA waves, but the destination will still be the same. So it could be another triggering event or news that will justify the forecast, but still have bit shares inverse to Bitcoin. So that's been in the back of my mind for, for a while now. Now, back to here, 677, target for Dash. I like Dash. I think the master node, they were the first ones to start the master nodes, I think, and that's a very cool system. Awesome to have. 